Hello, Gordon. Hello, Mike. Hi, Gordon. Hi, Kayo. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. So we know you are an iOS developer. I'm not going to ask. For how long have you been an iOS developer? Um, now, so professionally, about three, three, three and a bit years now, I think. But on and off, I've kind of tampered, like tinkered with it probably since, um, I don't know, maybe five, six years now. Wow, nice. Yeah. How can we help you? Awesome. Um, so I guess one of the challenges I'm kind of facing at the moment, one of the, the things I kind of find myself doing on an almost daily basis um, is working with apps that kind of surface the same data in multiple views. Um, and when when an action takes place within the app and we, you know, we make a change to, to that kind of shared piece of data within one view, it, it becomes quite it becomes quite apparent that the the different views get out of sync. Um, for example, uh, you know, an item in a feed that reflects um, interactions when you go into that piece of content and interact with it when you go back to the feed that doesn't quite kind of it's no longer in sync. Um, and I've struggled with with understanding, I guess, how to ensure that that data represented within a view is consistent kind of across the UI without going down the route of kind of, um, you know, just using notification center to just send events all over the app and, and find a way to do that that's testable and a way to do that that, that doesn't create coupling between these con components. Um, mm -hmm. Also kind of understanding when when to um, when to push state and when to tell a view that there's new state available and, and understanding um, kind of like the mechanism for delivering that um, is, is something I've kind of iterated on uh, you know countless times and never found a solution that kind of ticks all the boxes or, or doesn't introduce a side effect that I'm just not um, just not comfortable with I guess. Right, so keeping state in sync in general. Yeah. So you sent us a project. That's right. Yeah, this is um, it's essentially a, a concept app that really just demonstrates um, at a high level how two views can represent the you know the same kind of state, but by creating new state in one view, um, a different view becomes out of out of sync. Um, how can we re replicate this? So if I um, select here. Yeah, so if you click on the little like icon, the, the heart there, um, and then hit discover to, to, to go back to the previous screen. Yeah, oh, you'll, see. you'll see now one of the kind of challenges that this kind of creates in the background, for example, is if I like or unlike a piece of content, that's that's generally a different type of request I would send to the API. It, it may be something as simple as a put request and a delete request, but now those views are out of sync as to what the real state is. It's it's understanding without relying on something being eventually consistent, like the feed being refreshed or something, how to how to ensure that by tapping that for example, now it, it would send the correct request to the API and, and not needlessly send a request that's, that I know is invalid at this point anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if I refresh, it should show the yeah the correct state. Right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Because the data comes from the network. Yes. The UI reacts that's to correct. that. Okay. Yeah. That's correct. So when you press this button, it makes a request to an API, and at the same time, it updates the the state of the UI, or it waits for the API to complete? Um, so there's, um, it's like an optimistic update, uh, update at the moment. So when you when you tap that, we kind of update the value, we would update the value locally, um, and just assume that, that that request is gonna succeed. If that success, if that request fails, sorry, and doesn't return a success, then we would roll that value back um to to what it was previously that there, there would in a in a real world application there potentially be a, an error message or some way to surface that to the user but for the the purpose of kind of this um it, it will just roll the value back if it fails um, okay 
Okay, so how to keep in sync if you change here, for example? Yeah. When you go back, you would like to see that. That's correct. Deselected, yeah. right? Yeah. So how are you representing the, the model for this cell here? Um, so each cell in, so I believe there's, um, there is a, um, there's a, there's a couple of modules in the app, so it's kind of constructed in a way to to represent an app composed of frameworks. So there's the the feed, for example, which which just contains the the items required to represent the feed. And in the feature module, you'll see there is a feed item. Um, and now that feed item is a, is the standard sort of data. There's also um, shared kind of model that that lives in a component and that's that interactions model that you can see and and that's essentially also represented that's also used by that the the content page that we looked at it it kind of lives in a shared in a, in a common component so okay so this screen uses the feed item model yeah for each cell right that's correct each cell has its own feed item instance yep and when you select one, you get a different model because it has different properties, right? That's right. Yeah, the the feed item is is in a in a real world example, the feed item would be a, a condensed version of what's within that content module. Um, okay, and the content module also shares the same interactions uh, instance. Yeah, that's correct. So that that's a, a that lives in like a common a common module, which is just some, some shared, um, yeah, some shared, um, just some sh shared components. Um, yeah. Right. So one thing we could do here to share state between screens is to make this a class, right? That's one simple way of doing it. Okay. So if you mutate it here and you go back, you just call reload data if it's a collection view. Like every time view will appear, you just reload the data, right? Which would invalidate the, the current cell state and redraw it with the new data. So that's one way you can do it. Instead of using structs, you can use a class. And then you share this class between the screens. If one uh, screen mutates it, the other screen gets it for free. Okay. Yep. And since everything is in the same thread, all mutations that happens through the UI happens in the main thread. Yeah. Sharing state is fine because you're not going to have any threading issues with you know data races or anything like that. Okay. All right. So this is one simple way you can do it. Use a class rather than a struct. Okay. Have you tried that before? No, um, I, I see how that would work. Obviously, with the the different the, the, the difference between the reference types and the um, the value types, I guess what kind of confused me about about how that may work is is just because they come from different data sources and they're kind of composed separately. Um, would we still creating the feed item? Would we still um, I guess would we still how how would we reference that that previously created instance of interactions when when composing what the actual content model would look like, if that makes sense? Okay, so if I'm in a feed, mm. you make an API request and you get a bunch of models, right? Yeah. And when you select a cell, you go to another screen, and that's another API request. That's correct. Yeah. So that would then be that's then a request to to a different endpoint that, mm. that returns the content and returns the, the 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 comments and things like that. And how do you navigate from one screen to the other? Um, just just by selecting selecting the item, and then we kind of pass the. So in, in this case, we would pass the feed item back just to say that this feed item had been selected. Um, and then the in the scene delegate, we would decide what to what to route to um, based on that that callback closure. Ah, so in the scene delegate, you have a method here to navigate at some point. Yeah, that's oh, content a, yeah. scene. And you that's got the correct. ID. Yeah. 
If rather than getting the ID, if you get the module here, then you would have access to the interactions class. Correct? Okay, yeah, that's, that's, you know, that makes sense. Where do you call it? Here. Oh, you do have access to, is this the model? That's correct, yeah, that would be oh, the feed item. So here you could pass, rather let's use here the feed item. Like this, and this would be for this item. Dot ID. And here as well, you could get the item dot interactions and pass it. Item dot interactions. Okay. Something like this, you know, like interactions. And if you make this API request here to this comments load. Oh no, this is to get comments, so you don't need interactions here, right? Um, that's right. Yeah. So that's a that sh uh, that loader is like a composed loader. It, it, there's two endpoints that it would call one to get the content and one to get the comments. Um, but that that would be the that would be the method. I would I would imagine we pass that into because that contains the two other API calls. Oh, so there are two API calls here. One to get just what? Yeah. Sorry. So on the content, on the when you fetch the the piece of content, we fetch the piece of content, and we also fetch the comments for that piece of content. So they're like a, a separate request. Yeah, and we chain oh, we, we chain see. those requests. And you zip it. That's and, correct. Oh, okay. Yes, that makes sense. Okay. So first you load the content, and then you load the comments. You zip it, and you pass to the UI to show both at the same time. That's correct. And when you make a content request, you get the content object. It also has interactions, right? That's right. Yeah. The, so the interactions live on the co on the content, but the comments are a separate um, a separate entity. Right. So what you could do here, you could pass the interactions to the content loader, and as you load new content, instead of creating a new instance of the interactions is just updated that interactions they already have access to. But then you need to be careful with threading because if this is happening in the background, mm. you know, in the network request thread queue, you're gonna have issues. <laughs> yeah. So make sure to always update interactions in the same thread. But then you have this class that is shared, right? But then again, right. you have shared state, you need to be careful with data races now. <laughs> mm. Another thing you can do is to have your whole, all your models, you can keep them as structs. All the models are still structs and you pass them around as copy. And in the UI layer, you have view models and the view models are classes. Right? And you populate your view model classes with the data structs. Okay. And then you share the view models across screens. So your whole uh, core layer of models are still structs, pure, you know, no mutation, no reference types, nothing complex in there. Hmm. But when you pass this data to the UI layer, you share them into classes, view models. And everything in the UI is already in a single thread, you know, it's already safe. So that's yeah. fine. Yeah. All right, so this is still can produce a new instance of data. And at some point, you're going to get the, the combination of these two things that goes into map content. What does map, map content does? That just turns the, the zipped values into, um, into a tuple with, um, into a tuple with some arguments, uh, argument names, sorry. Okay, and at some point, you, you map this into the presentation layer, right? Into view models. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, it goes into the composer and then into into an, an adapter that just, um, uh, yeah, basically pu pushes those cell controllers to the view. Oh, here you create the view models. Yeah. So probably here is the place you can pass here the interactions. And here you sh you're already in the main thread, right? In the composition yes. here. That's right. So here you can pass the interactions here, which is. Uh, be a you can have the interaction struct and an interaction view model as well to hold the data they're shared with the ui okay makes sense and then you keep your core layer pure no mutation there yeah 
And in the UI, the UI is the ugly word, you know, it's the <laughs> where you have to deal with mutation and, and threading. But everything is actually in the same main thread, so you're not going to have issues there. So when you are mapping here, you pass the feed item and the interactions. Yeah. And you also have a content mapper, actually. That would do the same thing, right? Um, Doesn't do any mapping here? I don't think so. I think I didn't add that, but it, it, it should. I think, we, I think we're just mapping the values one for one, potentially, in the cell controller. Um, but it should have a presenter to handle that. Yeah, and then you share the, the view models between the screens. Interactions view model, for example. And when you mutate one, the other one automatically gets mutated in the same thread. And the core of your application still structs pure, you know, mm. no mutation. This is yeah. how you can do it. And yeah, this will keep it in sync. The only thing you need to do is every time you go back here, you will need to refresh the screen somehow, right? Reload mm. the data. Mm. So it might be like a view. Otherwise, it's not going to do it automatically for you. Yeah. Unless yeah. your view model, unless you have a view model, uh, your there is a class, right? Okay, you have the class interactions view model, and it has some kind of server closure. That every time there's an update, you call it. For example, uh, did update. One, you know. Yeah, the view controller is listening to updates, and will automatically does it. Would automatically do it on its own. Then you don't need to reload the data. I think we showed this in the program, right? How to create the view models with some callbacks. That's right. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, this is something you can do. If it's a class and you are mutating it internally, then you just call the update, and that's it. Everyone that is listening will. Refresh itself. Make sense? Yes. Yes. Or every time view will appear is called, you call reload data in the table view or collection view. Hmm. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Yeah. And the key was to, to make this possible is that you have access to the model here during the transition from one screen to the other, mm. right? If it, that's a class, then you can share the state in between them. And if there's any change, it affects both at the same time. And it, they are in the same thread, main thread, so that's fine. Just careful when you dispatch to, to make API requests, uh, database requests as well, that usually go to other threads. Mm. You might have data races if you don't synchronize them in the same thread. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. The other thing I'm concerned here is when you said, well, the API may fail, right? <laughs> the yes. API request may fail, and we yeah. need to keep that in sync as well. And there is a strategy we can use. For example, we have the UI. And we have a local cache, right? Which can be in memory, or it could be core data or realm, a system. And you also have the network, which is another system that lives somewhere else. And when the UI, there's an interaction with the UI, sometimes it goes to talk to the network, but it may fail, right? Yes. And you also have this local cache here, which are whatever the view models are holding at the moment, right? That could be in memory or in a local yeah. database. And then he, somehow the UI needs to keep both in sync because it needs to say, hey, make this request and automatically updates the, the current cache. But if it fails, then it needs to go there to the cache and update it again. Yes. And this is confusing to the users as well because they press the like button. The like button presented itself as liked. <laughs> And after 10 seconds, it 
it yeah. is you know it's not liked anymore it's like what happened here you may lose trust from your customers in there yeah. and it's very very hard to keep like these two things in sync at the same or these three things in sync at the same time the ui the network and the local cache so usually what we can do here is to actually only use the local cache so the ui let me so this is not a dependency diagram okay this is just a yep. flow diagram flow. <laughs> directional flow so the ui will update the local cache when there's an interaction so they use the press like button the ui is gonna and again the ui is not gonna talk to the local cache directly right it's gonna send an event like oh this model was mm -hmm. liked and this will update the local cache somehow right yeah and every time there's a change in the local cache it also will notify through some kind of closure to some kind of notification and the ui will update itself so that's the only they just need to keep in sync between themselves the local cache which again can be in memory it could be a database and the ui now there's a separate process behind the scenes they will do the same with the local cache and the network every time there's a change in the local cache it will trigger an api request and every time it loads some new data from the network it will update the local cache and when the local cache is updated it updates the ui but those are separate processes that can happen in separate threads you know at separate times you can schedule here every 10 seconds you're going to see if there's any change in the cache if there is you make api requests mm. and so yeah. on. you can schedule that right you can be smarter about it and if it fails let's say the local cache was updated and it failed to update the network you don't need to update the ui you just retry again in the next schedule you know in the next 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 time you try to sync yeah. these two that's a good strategy in a way that this app works completely offline mm. as soon as it gets the internet back it syncs with the back with the back end if there's any failure it's going to handle all of that in the background um. it's it's amazing when apps work like this because you yeah. don't you know you don't need to be retrying manually try and try and try and try no you press the button and you forget you forget it's an awesome it's, user experience yeah it's very transparent to the user as well it's it's yeah it's very cool absolutely and it, personally it makes me trust even more the app like if things like that work you know it's mm. i don't know find it yeah very good yeah so this is a strategy you can have you the ui Every time there's a change, an event in the UI, you will update the local cache. Every time the local cache uh, is updated, you will update the UI, right? Yeah. And that's the communication here. It never goes through the network. And again, the UI doesn't need to know there's a local cache, doesn't need to know there's a network because you have good abstractions in between. You can have some adapters mm -hmm. in between them. And here yeah. as well, the local cache doesn't need to know about the network. The network doesn't need to know about the local cache. You have also some adapters in between. Mm. And this is all testable. Yes, as well. and I suppose we could easily exchange um, the local cache for it could be you know a core data with a, a NS fetch results controller, or it could be an in-memory cache with um, as long as we yeah have a, a an interface that kind of satisfies that that behavior. It doesn't really matter what it's backed by. That that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. Even if you don't have an NS fetches results controller like core data provide. You can also have an adapter in between that every time there's a message that goes through the cache, it intercepts it and set it to the scheduler somehow mm. and keeps the state. Oh, something has been mutated here. So it can be done. Of course, with core data, this is much, much simpler because you get all this behavior for free. You just need yeah. to every now and then go there and retry with the network. There's a problem here. Sometimes if you have two devices and you try to update something in one device, you like something in one device, but it failed the request and it tried to like in another device now two devices try to mutate the state at the same time they need to have some some rules here which one's gonna win when there's an update in both and usually deal with this with uh just checking the the date the date where you try to do the change the latest one wins mm. yes. right if you have some kind of uh, created ad for the event like like dislike whoever was the less the most up-to-date one wins 
But that's a yeah. business rule. It, it depends on the case. Mm -hmm. How you're going to deal with conflicts, merge conflicts from the network. Yeah. But that's easy to deal with as well. Yes, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So yeah, I, re I really recommend this. It's much easier to to manage this this design here. It's much easier to implement and keep things in sync. <laughs> Yeah, it, um, it reminds me, so a, a lot of the projects I work on have a, a web front end and, and a lot of the, the team on the web use um, kind of like Redux and things like that where their UI is just dispatching actions and, and it's up to a, a component somewhere else to, to decide what that action should, you know, what, what the side effect of that action should be. And, and they're never directly talking to their network layers or anything like that. They're kind of... Um, the, the UI is always a representation of, of um, the state that they have. And, and in this case that you kind of pointed out here, this, this local cache, the, the UI would always just be a representation of what's in our, our local cache, which is, um, it, it, it's nice. Yeah. I like that idea. And that's it. And this local cache can be shared. If you, yeah. you know, you have like a, a scene here, let's say scene one. And you can have scene two as well that uses the same local cache. Of course, it doesn't know where this cache is coming from. Mm. The, the data is passed through the scene when you compose them. When you go from one scene to the other, you get this data from the cache. There can be any memory. It can be just a, a property somewhere mm. in the scene delegate, for example. right? And you just pass it to the next one. Or it can be a database. Right? Yeah. But... That's pretty much it. You can share it's, them. So if there's a change in the scene two here, it mutates the state. When it mutates state, it mutates the local cache, which directly updates scene one at the same time. Hmm. As yeah, because it's yeah, it's, it it's keeps in sync. It's observing those changes. That makes sense. And vice versa, if there's a change in scene one, it also updates scene two. Yeah. And sometimes you want to create a new scene. Uh, sometimes you want to have a form that you fill the form, but you don't want it to update things until the user actually commit and press the save button, right? In that mm -hmm. case, you would create a copy of the local cache, right? Just for that scene in memory. And when the user commit and press save, then you commit that to the local cache that is shared. Mm -hmm. With core data, you can create, for example, a separate managed object context. Yeah. And you never merge them, only when the user wants to merge them. But implementation details. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that does make a lot of sense though, yeah. And every time there's a new scene that you want to share state, you just plug them to the same state. But again, the scenes don't know where the state comes from. You don't need single tones, you don't need notification center, right? When you compose one scene with the other, you just make sure to share that state somehow. It's um it's very scalable as well this pattern because like you say to to just introduce another scene or just just extend this behavior it, we can just like just add something into the chain almost that that just um kind of almost like middleware just kind of you know listens for what's happening and decides if it's interested um yeah I like it yeah it makes a lot of sense yeah give it a try with this project here. Mm. Yeah, I think I will. Awesome. Did we answer yeah. your questions? Yeah, it's it's crazy. <laughs> I, I just find, I find on 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 the on the course so many times when I kind of reach out to people or, or get a response from from yourselves that the answer is always like elegant and simple. Almost, it's rarely uh, a complicated kind of solution, and I, I find a lot of the time. I go for the like the more compl I'm trying to like this must be really complicated and I'm trying to write these like combine extensions that will only update this view and, and pass this here and there when in reality you kind of need to step away from those complexities and just think about the problem that you're trying to solve um, and then think about the tools that, that help that like it doesn't have to be combined like you say we could do this with a simple closure that just has a did update method that's um, that's an even better solution because now we're not tied to combine or RxSwift or something. So 
yeah, this is um, very useful. Yeah. Definitely. And combining makes this very handy as well. You have mm -hmm. something like the parent value subject. Mm. Yeah. One way of sharing state as well, because here you can hold, for example, a feed item, right? Inside mm. this current value, value subject. And the feed item is a struct, but the current value subject, uh, is it a class? It's a class because it's shared. So you can share the current value subject with scenes. And every time it updates, it holds the latest value in here. And this value is shared, even okay. though the feed item is a struct. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because now we can just send the next, send the update to that current value subject, can't we? And, and, and everyone gets it. Everyone is yeah. observing the publisher. Gets it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play with it as well. I, I am. I think that's <laughs> that's my afternoon is completely written off yeah. now. I've got. I'm going to be doing this. This is cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Any other questions? Uh, no. To be honest, I think I think I think I had I did I did have something, but I think that was based on my assumptions of how we would think about a solution. But you've kind of like throwing that all away it's not I, I see now i was kind of going down the wrong path with how i was thinking so yeah really good yeah nice okay so when you're done implementing some different solutions here you could come back and um, show us and we evaluate what do you think yeah yeah um yeah i think it, i think it would be good as well to share that knowledge with with other people as well just to see um the pros and cons of the different ways of doing it. So I'm definitely keen to do that. And the project is public on GitHub, right? Yep. Yeah, it stay stay public as well. I won't um I won't remove it. Awesome. Okay, yeah. I'll share the link then in the description of the video here. Yep. Cool. Yeah, sweet. That's um it's been really helpful. I really appreciate that. Awesome. Thanks for joining us so again <laughs> and sharing. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Awesome. awesome. Take care, Gordon. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.